Hey, this is Bill Kennedy with the Arden Labs podcast. And today our special guest is Renee Richards. Hey, Renee, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Everything, well, at least here in Miami, everything is good. I can't complain. Uh, wh where, are you, um, where are you coming from today? Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, you just had the big uh, PGA um, tournament over the weekend there in South Carolina. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. All right. So on this podcast, we, we like to talk to our guests and get a, get a little bit of a background and a story on um, kind of where they are today and, and, and how they got there. So why don't you give everybody like the two minute, like two minutes of kind of, kind of what you're doing today um, here in tech. Currently, I'm a programmer analyst. This is actually my first tech job. The company that I started with, um, they started me off in, in support, and then I made the transition to basically a programmer analyst as like a developer. Um, but they wanted us to kind of understand the product before we you know, started working on it. It's a pharmacy management system. It does everything from process, you know, processing prescriptions, like dispensing. We interact with third-party systems to take payments, inventory, dealing with insurance and stuff like that. So we, we build apps that connect with the APIs for, to do those functions. So the, but the, the system that you're running on, is that running on like, um, I don't know, like an AS400 or is this all like new computing platforms? This is a desktop application and it's um, built with Delphi, uh, Pascal. You know, we just, you just download the EXE and, you know, all those bits of the app are uh, accessible to the clients. Oh, really? So the, like the pharmacies are running this software in their stores or how does that work? Yeah, they, they run it on um, desktops at, at their different stores. Um, we have mail order pharmacies as well um, that are using it. We distribute to like um, jails and uh, like hospital systems. So they run this EXE and it's a Windows application. And then that Windows application knows how to do all the like pharmacy adjudication and all that stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Still written in Delphi and Pascal. Has, has the company ever thought about migrating off of um, Delphi Pass, that's Borland, right? Like, I didn't even know you could still get a copy of that to even write code against. Well, so <laughs> it's written in different versions of it. You know, we're starting, they, they're still, Embarcadero is doing the newer ones, and that's what we're kind of using as we build the app, or as we modernize the app, I should say. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. But you, you really haven't come off of the this platform to modernize it, right? Like, you're not moving towards browser-based apps or using Flutter or they're, they're still focused on, on this Delphi Pascal. Right, right. For now, for now. Um, with having to integrate with, with newer systems where we're maybe we're looking into, you know, how to modernize this app. But um, right now, you know, we can just pull, you know, connect with an API and do what we need to do. I've got, I've got other questions, but we're going to have to hold off. Okay. Um, because I want to ask you one of my favorite questions, which is, what's your, what's your kind of earliest memory of even working on a computer? I know that you, you're a, a recent programmer, but I imagine computers have been in your life for a long time. So what, are, what is one of those early memories that you have? My earliest memory is, um, so my dad was in the Air Force and they had a, one of the punch card machines. They were huge computers. They were just like these big boxes and um, they'd have all these stacks and stacks of ye these yellow cards that had these notches cut out on, in them. And um, my mom told me later that those are the punch cards that, you know, I guess she went to school with trained to use those things. and but. Um, he would just let us kind of play around with those. But that's probably my earliest memory of working with computers. I, I remember those cards. I remember trying to draw on what were Was it like you were using them to draw on them because they probably had thousands of them or um, just, just to keep you busy? 
yeah, something to keep us back. I don't think we, I drew on them. I think maybe I was organizing them or something. I don't remember. I just remember handling them and wondering why, you know, they had the uh, cutouts and whatnot in them. The holes in them. I guess they right. were already used at that point. So they were. <laughs> right. And then, so that's when you were like around seven years old. Right. Your, was your, your mom also in the military? No, she was not. So when you're in, let's, let's say, uh, uh, getting in and around high school time, what are your kind of interests at that point as you're, as you're getting into, into high school? Foreign languages. <laughs> oh, so w were you thinking already, like getting into high school, that you were going to be maybe an interpreter or something like that? Yes, that's why I wanted to be an interpreter translator. <laughs> and it didn't quite work out. <laughs> I got pretty far but uh, in school, but um, yeah, life took me a different direction. So, <laughs> well, wait, well, let me. Yeah, I don't want you to go too far ahead of me here because I'm okay. I'm, I'm kind of curious how that kind of popped up on your radar screen. Um, at an early age? I remember in fifth grade, we were watching some video of, and it was in a foreign language. And that was like, it was in Spanish, actually. I didn't know it at the time. And I was like, really curious about it. So my mom would take us to the library on base. And they had, you know, being a military library, it was, you know, a lot of resources for um, the airmen to kind of, you know, learn stuff that they needed to learn for their job. So there was lots of um, resources for learning different languages. And so I would check those out and then, you know, practice at home. And I just was really good at it. And it was interesting to me. And you kind of, did you start that like in ninth grade or was it even earlier before? We didn't, where I went to school, we didn't have it until um, the ninth grade. Yes. And what was the first language then you that you really focused on learning? Spanish. Sp it was Spanish. <laughs> right. <laughs> so your how how hard was it? was it easy for you to learn? I had a horrible time trying to learn how. I still even today <laughs> in Miami I can't. I can speak food, which we always laugh about. But <laughs> was it easy for you to pick up another language like Spanish? It was. It was. Um, French was a little harder. But the grammar rules are the same, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was it it was easy for me to pick up. Now, when I uh, went to college, I studied German, and that was difficult. <laughs> how many languages? Um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but how many languages can you speak that you feel like you could land in country and navigate? Just three. <laughs> I could do Spanish, French, and German. That that's about it. I can maybe a little Swedish. I can kind of read it so if we needed to find where we needed to go i could do that as far as like oral communication I, it's probably just spanish and french with spanish you can get away with italian too i i think so probably. that's pretty good yeah okay so you decide that you want to be this translator you're, you're thinking i have to imagine maybe you're thinking like the un right being one of those big rooms yeah right traveling <laughs> oh all right traveling and being able to know all of the secrets that are going down because <laughs> you're the person in the middle right like a spy i'm thinking <laughs> you're thinking you and spy here <laughs> with your military background already because your parents <laughs> all right so part of the curriculum that you're focused on in high school then is is learning spanish and you're and you're thinking you're going to be a translator what other things in high school are you interested in are you playing sports? Are you into music? Um, oh, I was um, playing. I'd been playing violin since the fifth grade um, and was kind of trying to pick up viola as well. So I was like in an orchestra as well. And you're in a, can you still play the violin today? Yeah, I could squeak out a few things. <laughs> <laughs> but you you were you were living on or just off of basis. So were your was your dad moving around a lot or were you able to stay? So we, um, Charleston is one of those bases where you could, you kind of, you can stay here. Um, my, what my dad would do is do what they call remote tours so that he would be gone like a year, maybe two years. So we didn't have to travel and we would uh. stay cause he didn't want us to be, you know, having to move around like some of the other kids had to do from base to base every two years, having to 
move someplace else. Was that tough on you, not having your dad around for a year at a time? Oh, yeah, it was pretty tough. <laughs> like, we didn't have Zoom then. Nope. <laughs> no, it's phone calls when you could and, um, like, letters, and, you know, he would send us stuff. But, yeah, it was pretty tough. Wow. But uh, as an adult now, do you kind of appreciate that, I guess, sacrifice he made? Oh, yeah, because... Like, I'm an introvert, so <laughs> having to be able to move around from, you know, place to place would have been would have been harder on me. Maybe not so much my siblings, but <laughs> definitely for me. Okay, so you're you're fortunate enough to be able to stay in this one high school for for those four years. You're focused on wanting to be a translator. So as you're and you're playing the violin, which is awesome. So I, I tried in like sixth grade to play the violin. They told me my arms were too short, and that was it. It was over. <laughs> These little things that pop in my head when I talk to people. I remember That's being ridiculous. So, so sad. No, I was really tiny. I was always a, I was really tiny. Like I, I got it, but I remember the teacher looking at me, going, "He just it ain't gonna happen. He's physically can't do this." <laughs> oh man. Um, oh my God, what a memory. Okay, so. As you're getting getting kind of through high school, is you're still kind of passionate about being a translator. So you're looking at universities at this point? Right. Yeah. But I ended up going to an HBCU and um, in North Carolina and um, studying from there. And um, that's where I picked up German. My teacher was actually a Russian and um, he was, they were all well, all three of my like French, Spanish, and my German teacher were very hands-on, very helpful. They would uh, hit me up like on the way to class. We'd be in the elevator, and they, uh, my French teacher was famous for doing this. She would like ask me questions in all three languages, and I'd have to respond to her in whatever language she presented. So by the time we got off the elevator or got in the class or whatever, I couldn't even speak English. At that <laughs> <point>. <laughs> That had to be stressful, right? Like, if I saw that teacher near an elevator, I would, like, go and tie my shoe or something. <laughs> Did you try to avoid the elevator? Like, or, no. like, look look for the teachers as you rounded the corner? Like, no. Is, <laughs> but that had to be stressful, right? Because you knew what was going to happen if you were outside right. the classroom with her. <laughs> well, it was um, – because it was, like, um, what do you say, like a challenge – and it would annoy me that she was challenging me. So I would just work that much harder to make sure I was prepared <laughs> that I could actually answer her questions and, and you know, do it smoothly. I, I, I've always heard that German is a very technical, if you wanted to do anything really technically, write something technically, express something technically, German's the language for, for that. Is that true? Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like now that I think about it and make the like the grammar rules and stuff like that make a lot more sense than say some of the Spanish, but then at the same time the Spanish grammar rules kinda yeah, for, for speaking, it made it made more sense when you're like I don't know how I don't even know how to explain it. Conversationally in the flow, everything just kind of flows, right? right? I, you, you can hear it. I, when I'm in Germany, sometimes I feel like people that are speaking German are really sad and depressed. Like there's no, there's no like fun in the language sometimes. When I hear someone speaking German and they're excited, I, I actually get excited because I'm like, wow, this is, you know. But I feel like it takes a lot of energy to get to that. <laughs> but in Spanish, I mean, everybody's so animated. That right. It just flows, right? Right. <laughs> Which of those languages are your favorite to speak? Like French or I imagine French is a fun language to speak. It is. I had a chance to, we went to Quebec uh, about a year ago, um, like before the pandemic. So I guess two years now. <laughs> but uh, we went to Quebec and I had a chance to, you know, use it. But in Quebec, it's, they speak French a little differently <laughs> than, yeah. than they do in, uh, in actual France. So, um but yeah, that was fun. I always remember that scene in The Matrix when the guy is saying how much he loves cursing in French, and then he goes <laughs> off, and he just and you're just like, yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're when you're in college, okay. So you're taking these. You're, what, what was the the type of degree you were going after? Was it specific to 
wanting to be a translator or were you just taking language classes related to? I was taking language classes. Um, I was really still trying to explore what my end game was going to be, whether it was just going to major in, I think I was going to major in Spanish and minor in French. And then maybe um, my, all my teachers were trying to gear me towards teaching, which I knew I did not want to do. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, my school only went so far, so I was um, going to have to transfer to NC State. Um, and I just ended up coming back home as my mom was like, this is too expensive. You know, this is out of state and we just can't afford this. So I ended up coming back home. And um, was that after a couple of years? Like, did you finish your degree there or was it a two year program to start? Well, it would have been a four year program. I would have been taking some classes at the HBCU and then some class, my foreign language classes at NC State. But um, yeah, it was after a couple of years. So I just ended up coming home because gotcha. it was no point in playing, paying for, you know, two colleges because they didn't have like a bridge program or anything like that. Did you take any computer courses at all when you, when you were in university? This seems to be completely off your radar screen. Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it was never discussed in high school. It was never, um, we had physics and stuff like that, but I didn't take those in, in school, but there was never any discussion about being um, a computer scientist. You, you know, you hear about engineering or, you know, the teaching and being a chemist or physicist or something like that, but you, the computer part of it, other than to use it to write papers <laughs> it was there you know there was no discussion of that same thing in early college I didn't even realize honestly that that was something I could do until well into being a, an adult but what year what year did you graduate high school I have to ask because I, I kind of <laughs> gonna have to get a time frame here on it, it just helps to kind of get a yeah. general sense okay of 88 88 Okay, so I graduated in eighty seven. So we're Okay. So okay, so yes, right. The the, the mainframes were kinda of just coming out of even the mainframes were just coming out of university. We just okay, so that's so you do two years of university to be a translator, you realize that you, you can't continue that, you go back home. What happens now? I become a pharmacy technician. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how does that come about? Is it just that was an opportunity that that just showed up? Right. I ended up working at um, Ecker Drugs. I don't know if you remember that. I remember Ecker <laughs> Drugs. Eric is shaking his head. I remember. <laughs> they had them here in Florida for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, but I started out there as a cashier, and um, the young lady that worked in the back in the pharmacy, she was leaving. So um, to go to um, the the VA has a mail order facility, so she was going there, and so they needed they had a spot open, so I went there and worked and worked in there, and then got exposed to pharmacy. So, so you moved back, and then they were I imagine they were saying to you, "This could be a career." Right, right. And and you went back there, and then you had to go to school for that too, though, right? No, not at that time. That time at that time it was. Uh, um, kind of, you know, learn on the job. Really? So, right. Yeah. We didn't get this um, thing for going to school, say, maybe five, six years ago to where it's like making it mandatory. Doesn't yeah, a, that, what does a pharmacy tech do? Aren't you dispensing pills and you're not mixing anything though? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We're doing, yeah, we do all the preparation. Um, the pharmacist comes back and checks behind us. Um, they're entering prescriptions. So nowadays we can enter prescriptions, but there are checks on that. And you have software that, that, you know, does checks and things like that. You were a nurse? Like you had no mm -hmm. formal education and they're just like, oh, go dispense five of those pills and mix this stuff over here. Yeah. That, I mean, well, I mean, they train you. <laughs> oh, they show you I, what to do. <laughs> but yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's like, there's no school for it. No. Eric and I are no. both like wondering how we're still alive. <laughs> 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 I'm actually, I, did, I had no idea that that was something that you could just be trained on the job for back in the day. Today, yeah. they're asking for education, though. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, wow. So, oh, I got a bunch of questions now. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, it's my, it's, I, I had no idea. But so, how long are you 
work as that pharmacy technician behind that counter? For Eckerd's, I think it was a year. And then um, one of the pharmacists that worked there, she also worked at the hospital part time. So she's like, oh, we got an opening there. So that's I went there and worked um, probably two years and doing hospital. And that's a whole nother experience that made it so much more fun. There's so much more to learn and not have to worry about dealing with customer facing. You just dealt with nurses. But um, that's a whole nother level of drugs now because oh, you're yeah. dealing with just about everything, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, I would do even do um, uh, entry. Um, actually, at that time, the, the, the doctors would come in, just hang out in the pharmacy and we'd bounce around questions as far as, okay, well, what is this drug going to help me? You know, I got this issue. Is this drug going to help me do this? You know, because there's different antibiotics and, you know, that were coming about at that time. And, and so just. So you were, you were learning the drug to drug interactions too. Right. You were learning everything about these drugs inside and out. Right. Were you reading, I guess, were you reading materials that were coming in with the drugs? Was it all mostly like that interactive training with, between the nurses and the doctors? How, how are you getting your education? At that time, it was a little bit of a lot of things. So you're getting some training from nursing, getting some training from the pharmacist. There's all kind of literature that you're reading through um, to, pr you know, prepare a drug. You got to, you know, read through the documentation that comes with the drug. So, yeah, there's it's it comes from a lot of different direction, you, you, how you learn. Were you expected at some level to be able to tell a nurse that, you know, there's a, a, a drug interaction here that maybe you're not aware of? Like, did you ever come across those situations as a tech where you're like, I don't know if this cocktail that they're prescribing is going to work? That's mostly pharmacist. I mean, I can say that, we, you know, you had a rapport with some of the nurses and you knew some of the information because some things you just know because you've you've been you've experienced it and you already know the answers or you've talked to the pharmacist or you listen to, you know, overheard pharmacists speaking with somebody else. So you can kind of say with authority certain things. But legally, we you know, we weren't allowed to do that. So usually I would just refer them to the pharmacist. It, it's kind of depends what it you know what it was did you ever think at the time to maybe even become a nurse or no i wanted i thought i wanted to be a pharmacist but it's kind of hard to you know say i'm gonna go to pharmacy school and work full-time <laughs> is the pharmacy school university based or is it trade based university based okay. like so when you come out at that time you came out with more like a, a bachelor of science degree but now it's it's a doctor. All right. So you did a year at Eckert's. You you've, you're doing like two years at the hospital. You're learning a whole bunch of the, that hospital world, the the pharmacy world, all of that. You're still young. You're still in your like mid twenties at that point, right? Because right. Mm -hmm. So what happens after the hospital? Family <laughs> had family. So I got married, had kids. We. Um, uh, my ex was in the in the military. We moved to Hawaii, so I was a stay at home mom for a while. In um, Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> Did you like being in Hawaii? I loved Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been there. Really, so. you need to go. <laughs> wow. Okay. And how many um how many kids do you have? They're, two. They're two kids. Yeah. Right, it's interesting to okay. So you're in Hawaii and all that, and then you you you're a stay at home mom, which. I completely understand. So when do you decide that you're going to get back into the workforce? Um, we leave Hawaii. I come back home again. <laughs> and um, I end up, my, uh, I needed a job. My dad's like, well, the VA is, is hiring. Let me take you down there. So he takes me down to the VA, which I probably didn't need to go with him, but I, he likes to visit his friends. So... <laughs> so I go down there, I fill out applications and whatever for pharmacy, and um, I start out at the, eventually get in the mail order facility that they have here in Charleston. So you end up back in that pharmacy. Mm hmm And how long, a, how long a, a difference between the time that you left and you came back? Are we looking at like 10 years? Are we looking at... Oh, no. It's like... Uh, Four years. Four, four years. years. So yeah. your experience is still very, very relevant. Right. 
that you had. Right. Okay. Other than that, new drugs maybe coming in and around, but and then dealing with a mail order facility, that was something something totally new. When we talk about mail order, I mean you're still doing the pharmacy, right? Right. But the difference is, is that it's going into an envelope. Right, and it's um, fully, fully, fully automated. <laughs> so you've got conveyor systems, you've got um, all these automated processes going on. So I have to imagine that you didn't like it because you lost all the interactions you were having with doctors and nurses and... Well, again, I'm an introvert, so I'm good. <laughs> I oh, was good. <laughs> you were happy that you were happy. Yeah, that I was good. Yeah, I mean, I I'm just yeah, I was just like fascinated with um, seeing all the automation. That that was just something so new to me, and that's when I learned that being a software developer was a profession um, because the the um, the automation and stuff was the software for it was built from the ground up from this small company that they had contracted out with and they were coming in to make changes one day or I guess over a couple months or whatever and you know I saw somebody that you know looked like me <laughs> and you know I was like okay so this is something that's not only a profession but it's something that I you know, I could do. So I just started like researching and trying to find out like, you know, what, what all I need to do to get into something like this. And that's when you realize that tech is just so broad. There's so many things, there's networking, there's all these, you know, there's like hands-on with the hardware. Did you want to do hardware, software, back end, front end, and all of this stuff. So from there, it was just a matter of just trying to figure, narrow down what I wanted to do in tech. But I knew that I, I was ready to do something different from pharmacy. At this time, it has to be around 97, 90. This was 2001 at this point. Okay. So you're, you work in the, you work in this, uh, at the VA in around, okay, 2000, 2001. Okay. Right. And the computer systems had to be more sophisticated for you too, after those four years, right? Because you're, right. you're doing everything there. Right. You're going from just a, no, you know, a desktop PC to just like, I mean, we were still using desktop PCs, but it was just an, a whole system of things that interacted, you know. So when you, when you see these um, technicians and developers come in to do these upgrades and you see, like you said, you saw someone who looked like you, did you go and approach this person? Did you start talking to them? Did you ask them how to get like... What was your next step? Because it seems like you got really excited about this and you wanted to you wanted to move into that field. What was your next step on, on that journey? So the head of our IT was, you know, somebody I communicate. She was she kind of was in a pharmacy tech pharmacy technician for a while, too. And she got into being like the head of our IT. So I just kind of sat down and talked with her about, you know, okay, well, what do I need to do? What what classes do I need to take? And she started, and you know, what pathway do I need to go? And then she kind of sort of directed me to, you know, you know, what classes I would need to take, where I could go, uh, what directions I, you know, what things I could do. So what was the choice then you went what did you do at that point? Um, I went to community college here. It started from there. And, you know, you first you get like kind of a broad exposure. So you got, you know, access and Excel and um, you could do SQL and, you know, just kind of and then and then programming. I remember we worked with uh, HTML. We had to do download the HTML kit and work work in that. And it was that and there was no CSS like the if you're doing any colors or anything like that it was within the HTML but um, then you learn JavaScript and um, how to you know just trying to teach you how to think <laughs> you know work the logic to get something working this is around 2004 I guess you're gonna start university. right now you're juggling a full-time job you're you're now taking these classes and you still have two young kids at home, mm -hmm. right? That you're right. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going right. on here and there oh, was yeah. no concept of virtual school. I don't think. And like nope. 2000. And um, it was just beginning um, at this com community college. They were just beginning that. 
and you couldn't really go to school full time. So you were was were you going after a four year degree at this point or a two year degree? It was a two year degree at this point because I still wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. So I think I I think my major was like network administration or something like that. And then, but it's like my exposure to when we had to take one programming class and it's like I really like this <laughs> so I yeah like making something work you know just by typing words that was the html and stuff right it's html and then later javascript and then um but you couldn't really take more than what a couple classes every semester sometimes i try to overload myself and it did not go well <laughs> i can't <laughs> so, imagine it <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah i mean sometimes it was two classes sometimes it was four classes sometimes i'd get burnt out and did, didn't take any at all so it took a long time to get that associate's degree but while you're doing all of that is work allowing you to do more and more technical stuff or are you still kind of exactly okay exactly yeah nice so yeah i want to i want to get a sense of from going to university and that job that you're at when does when do you take the next step is it like th four years later after you you finish that degree or is it like what happens there so I was at the mail order facility for almost 10 years. Wow. Yeah, it took a, a long time. <laughs> so like I said, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Some, sometimes I wouldn't go to school at all. I mean, it's just, it was really hard with, you know, trying to keep everything floating. Um, but I ended up at the end of that 10th year coming, you know, getting an idea what I really want to do programming. So um, I was like, I can't be here at this facility with all, it was, it was really stressful. It was a lot going on because I, um, I was lead then. So you're managing an area <laughs> as well as, you know, everything else you have going on. And so I was like, I need to take a step back so I can focus on school. So I ended up going to the VA hospital and working and finishing out and, um, then going, you know, going for my bachelor's degree. See, that's really impressive because I think what happens to a lot of people is they're being promoted in their jobs and now you're making more money and you maybe sometimes get stuck mm -hmm. in these jobs you don't necessarily want to be in because like you have, you have kids, you have family, you have, uh, but you, I feel like you've kind of knew that this wasn't really what you wanted to do. This was more of a means to an end. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a horrible job. I learned a lot. You got a lot of exposure to different things and, and learning to troubleshoot and problem solve and things I probably wouldn't have learned, you know, in retail or, or hospital even. It, sometimes you got to like just kind of say, well, let's see, if if this is not something you can do long term, you, you got to cut your losses and, you know. But how technical were you in those last years? Like when you say in your troubleshooting, what are you troubleshooting like? that something didn't get delivered on time or equipment is not oh a little bit of a little bit of everything so like prescriptions weren't processed um going through the process to find out where it was breaking down and looking at um a whole process like they wanted to do a two day two day t turnaround but there were some manual processes that were taking a long time so we would you know refine our processes and just okay where's the bottlenecks you know what can we do to fix that is this something that we can do with software is this something that we need to do as far as employees um you know that kind of thing just looking at systems seeing how they work seeing where they break down and working through the problem solving steps to you know fix it and prevent it, prevent it from happening again where the answer isn't always a machine. Like there are some things that... Right. Yeah, we, I think we've lost some of that <laughs> idea <laughs> here, you know? So, I, you know, it's like, you know, you're there 10 years. So like we're talking like 2014 and you have this amazing amount of knowledge, wisdom, experience in this pharmacy space, right? Like, right. I don't, I, I can't imagine there's a lot of people with all of that that you have. So... When you leave, you leave the mail order and you go back. Why do you go back to the VA at that point? I just made a transfer. So you want to keep, it's kind of sort of, you think about being in the military. So it's kind of sort of, you want to keep your, your time. You want to keep your rank. You want to keep your pay. Um, you want to keep your benefits. 
you know, so I still got a family to take care of. So it's like, I want to keep all of that, but still be able to kind of take a step back as far as responsibility and, and, and hours and a less focus on job and more focus on getting to the next step. What are you doing back at the VA? You're just, are you doing mail order again there? So there, they did have that. I was kind of doing the mail, I but um, it was also doing the, the front window. So it was a when I got there, it was kind of like a retail mm. slash mail or yeah. all together. Okay. <laughs> now, at some point, you f- you finish this degree, right? I met when you're there at the at the VA. Mm-hmm. How do you end up becoming this programmer? When does that when does that happen for you? When do you get out of that? When do you get from behind that desk? So uh, about. A month and a half, two months before I was supposed to graduate, I'm starting to send out applications, right? I'm looking at different things. There was like one place that was, you know, working on Salesforce software and uh, like you sell Salesforce is their, you know, whatever it was they were doing. I can't even remember at this point. And I'm like, well, I could learn that. Um, and I just kept running across this job that was here for a programmer analyst. They also had a position for tech support. And at this point, I'm like, I got to get my foot in the door. If I got to do tech support, then I'll just do tech support. So, you know, I get with my husband. I'm like, all right, you know, we got to figure out, you know, make sure our money is right. <laughs> if I if I take a step back and just make, take this leap. Um, I almost didn't apply for the job because I didn't think I would be able to get hired. But I applied for it and sat down. We talked and they were looking for somebody. It was pharmacy software. They were looking for somebody that had worked in pharmacy. That was that was mainly what they were looking for. They must have freaked out. I, I would have been freaking out if you walked in and said, I'm interested in this job because the level of experience you had, <laughs> they weren't going to find that. They didn't say they freaked out. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had known you back then because I would have been your agent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Renee is only willing to work for you if the following demands are met. But that keeps you in the system, right? Is it the same company that you're working for when you take this check job, um, tech job, or you're right? Right. I was like, I had applied for both just to get. I was like, if I if I had you tech support, fine. I just wanted to, you know, take that next step, and really didn't think much of it. Um, I sat down with them and talked to them, and you know, explained what I was trying to do, and they were like, you know, you took the same, you know, like my su- immediate supervisor was like, you took the same path I did. You know, I went to school, I was working, but I was, you know, pharmacy tech, and then you know, I came here, and it's like the a lot of the stuff that she's that we're doing, she's like, I learned while I was here, you know, she had that degree, but you know, a lot of the stuff you, you just kind of learn on the job, <laughs> like SQL, you get, you can do joins and, you know, select statements, but you know, doing stored procedures and having the app interact with your database. I mean, you, you kind of don't get a whole lot of that in school. I imagine then they offered you this job. You had to take a, a decent pay cut to get in. No, I did not. I was hoping you said that. <laughs> oh, I was hoping you said that because you're in the system already, well, right? Well, this, this is not even part of the VA at this point. This is just, uh, in, which was a big leap for me. Like I had that job security being with the VA, but, you know, it's like, all right, well, this is going to be outside the VA. It's, it's not the same type of security, but it was a company that had been around for 20 years. So I'm going to try it. And, um, but yeah, I, I, they did ask you know, what I was looking for, um, what I was making before. So yeah, I didn't take a pay cut at all. I think they recognize your experience. I, in fact, <laughs> I think they were praying that you weren't asking for double because <laughs> like, I, I, we, we got to get her. We got to get her. What is she going to do? <laughs> That's fine. All right. So you you take this job now as a technician and you're learning um, – how to maintain the system supports. I imagine you're learning how to run reports. You're you're learning everything that you didn't see behind the scenes, right? Was that like fascinating for you at some point? Because you're right. You must be making connections between you being in front of that computer and everything that's happening behind it. Like it's interesting. I you know you get you know because I was getting kind of like burnt out with doing pharmacy. Pharmacy is like same thing day in and day out. But it's also terrifying because you you're going from knowing what to do, training other people, to not knowing what you, 
<laughs> what to do. So it was, it's kind of frustrating, but, and scary and, but exciting. Onboarding in any job is like that. You got, and I, and I sometimes tell people like, get through the first four to six weeks and then let's see what you feel. And normally after that, you're like, I wish I was back six weeks ago. I got too much work <laughs> in front of me now. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what was like some of the funnest aspects of the job when you were doing that tech role? What was the things that when you were asked to do it, you were kind of most excited about it? Um, I really did not like taking phone calls. I will say what I don't didn't like. Because <laughs> you knew somebody was not happy on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. not necessarily. Most uh, uh, most of our clients are pretty are pretty cool. It's just a matter of when you're first starting out and you're learning how to use this app and troubleshoot it and show people how to do certain things. It was it, and you didn't know yourself. <laughs> So it was a little uh, scary, a little um, frustrating on that end. What lets you transition from like the tech support into the programming role? What what happens? They knew that's what you wanted to do from the beginning, right? Like you went in, you went in with that. Right, right. How long did it take? Four four months. Four months. You went from tech to to writing code. Yeah. Okay. Now. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right. So she would give me little projects to do. First, it started out with SQL, you know, just kind of doing SQL report, little small reports and small fix. You know, sometimes you'd have to tweak a store procedure or something for specific clients. I don't know, maybe they wanted a a doctor's name on something or to track something or whatever to kind of get used to the tools and stuff that they were using. Yeah, after four months, then I went over to to, uh, development. Now, you've been with this company in this kind of programming role for like 10 years now? No, two and a half years. Two and a (laughs) half years. Okay. Okay. So this is all recent. I'm trying to... Yeah. I I lost my dates a little bit here. I'm sorry. Right. So (laughs) it's just only over the last two and a half years that you've been um, kind of actively doing software development. Right. Since this is a desktop app, you're touching everything, right? You're touching screens. You're touching business logic. What database does this... this Right application use does it use a local database or is there like every pharmacy has another machine with a database in it we supply the app they have to supply their own um, server we're getting to a point where like helping them you know migrate to cloud but um i'm not in that part aspect of it Um, yeah because this is old school this is an old school product like this is this is what we didn't we were doing this in the 90s where (laughs) you had your own little closet right and you had these computers and you ran your desktop apps right. and it was all kind of localized there if you wanted to work from home you had to basically screen share a machine in the so your comp- the company you're working with now they're they've started building out a cloud-based solution to this they're starting to they're getting their feet wet with it we have a couple clients that kind of did it on their own and so we're trying to we're trying to get to that, get to that point. A lot of our clients just want to want to do that. They don't want to maintain the databases. No, I know, but it's a massive job. I mean, just yeah, somebody's going to have to go in and export, import all their data too, right? I mean, right. Multi tenant. I mean, there's there's a lot here. So what what is? Are you looking at maybe getting on that team? Like what what are your what are you looking at right now in terms of? Well. I- I think <laughs> I think all the developers at some point were going to be working with that. Um, so I think my focus right now is going to be um, interacting more with like third parties. So APIs, which is something we did not learn in school. <laughs> so I, I want to explore that a second. You're because when you when you talk about um, you're talking about the desktop app making API calls to get right. To do what? Uh, uh, to bring in data? To do the pharmacy adjudication? To interact with, um, so like one of the apps that I'm trying to get working here, when you, you're trying to get pre-authorization for your prescription, so maybe your insurance is not going to approve it just right, maybe they just immediately, maybe there's some more information they need or some approvals that they need. So there's this third party company that, you know, works on that. I guess on their end, there's some AI going on to where things that are most likely to go through, they can go ahead and patch those through if there's any more, any other 
things that they need, then they'll interact with the doctors. But it's, yeah, it's pulling, basically, it's like, hey, this prescription is processing. Um, can you go ahead and give me a pre-auth for this? And then they'll send back information to present to whoever's, you know, processing a prescription. This is a go or, you know, so that they can get the prescription done and get the patient on their way. And all of this development, I think we said in the beginning of this show here, all, all the development and software you're writing is in Pascal. Right, right. Um, either that or um, we're doing, you know, SQL store procedures. Right, which again, like I love store procedures. I, I, I want the... I want the world to go back to store procedures. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of my queries sitting on the database. Uh, everybody, the, the whole industry, I don't know what happened. But everything's a, a circle. Everything comes back. I'm starting to feel like <laughs> GraphQL on the servers, getting our store procedures back slowly here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's easier when you need to make a change. So you're not having, you know, the client is not having to wait for, you know, the whole... QA process, you know, um, like dev reviews and all of that in order to get a whole new EXE for you to, you know, for you to use. And you can just like tweak a store procedure, run it through and then go, go from I, there. I'm with you. There are people hearing this right now, freaking out that we're going to make a change to the database <laughs> without a, without a full <laughs> release, all containerized. <laughs> um, <laughs> One of the reasons we're talking is because I started seeing your name on my Twitter feed and, and you know, I'm, I'm big in the Go programming world. So big in like, that, that's where I've spent my last, you know, seven or eight years kind of programming in Go. Have you played with the Go programming language? Is, is that a language that attracts you? Is that something that you want to be doing? Like, what are you looking at for the next year, two, three years out? Right now I'm looking at do, you know, learning a lot more about cloud. I'm not sure, I really like Java as a language, but um, I think we're gonna stick with Delphi since they're, you know, they're constantly improving it and, and everything. So I think at our company, we may still stick with Delphi, but right now, yeah, just looking into cloud stuff. I have tinkered with Go, Todd, I can't remember Todd's McLeod. last name right now. Yes. <laughs> so um, he has a course that I had been like tinkering about with. It's interesting. Um, it seems easier, but I'm not sure. I don't know a whole lot about about it and whether whether or not we could like use it where I'm working or not. I can't I have to, I can't put in my head the idea that if you're moving to the if you're moving to the cloud is Pascal right now in Delphi an option for doing that sort of development? They've made a lot of improvements. I mean, we we do have a couple of clients that are, you know, putting the application on there. Right now, the main thing is just, you know, because we just interact with the database and that's, that's the main thing right now. We'll have to do a rewrite at some point. So, and, and that's been something kicked around. It's just a matter of planning and getting to that. It's not going to be an easy undertaking. But my guess is that that's going to be a browser-based application when it's all said and done. Right. So you can kind of, I think the idea is so that you can pick the pieces that you want to use of the app rather than all being just one big monolith thing. Are you excited about working on some of that stuff when you get the opportunity? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> You're already planting seeds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what has been we've got like five more minutes left here. So um because you're 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 you've been kind of hedged down software developer now for a couple of years, what has been some of the more difficult things around this taking this job as opposed to some of the other jobs that you've had? What have been some more of the challenges for you as you start your career here as a software developer? I guess problem solving with something that you you're you're not confident in. So like my you know this is a total even though I'm working still working on a pharmacy based system it's still not doing pharmacy it's not processing prescriptions. So it's kind of like my confidence kind of took a hit <laughs> and it's like I'm I feel like I'm constantly trying to like prove myself right? <laughs> that I know what I know or that I can learn what I need to learn. That's been the main issue for me. But there isn't anything that you've been asked to do that you haven't been able to do, right? Like you, you, you've learned it, you fight through it, you make it happen. 
Right. And if that means, you know, I, I sit down with supervisors and ask questions and, um, then that's the, you know, that's what I need to do. So, and they've been good, good about that. That's everybody, right? Like, uh, yeah, we don't know what we don't know until we right. <laughs> spend the time learning it. Right. Right. And that, and that's the other thing is, you know, you can learning how to ask the question, um, learning my, learning my terminology, learning how to describe, okay, because you're, you're taking, you know, what the client is telling you and you're like, okay, this is what they're telling me. This is what's, what I can see that's happening. I don't know how to fix this. So now I got to ask the question to somebody, you know, to the supervisor or whatever. And that whole line of communication, being able to ask the question so that they can help me. So that's been a challenge just learning how to ask questions. Actually, you know, that's that's a really nice thing you're bringing up because learning how to ask, learning when to ask a question is one thing. Learning how to ask the right question is another. Yeah, you're right. That That's um, that's a skill set all, all into itself. Right. But and I have to imagine that your pharmacy, your 20 years of pharmacy experience right. has to really help you when business problems are coming up or they're talking about business processes and things like you have to be able to add a lot of value for that. Definitely. Definitely. Um, you know, working in Eckerd's, you might work with a bunch of different pharmacists. So you've got all these different personalities that you've got to kind of figure out how to work with these, these different people. And, um, that I, I kind of brought that experience to, you know, work with me now and just trying to figure out, okay, this person's way of communicating, I need to use te more technical terms, whereas this person's way of communicating, maybe I need, I, you know, more visual terms in order to, you know, ask the question. You have empathy for the, for the end user because you were an end user and you lived in that world. And right. I, that's one thing that I always found invaluable when I was hiring people is... right that 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 empathy that experience being on the other side of the software you're writing um that's so it's so important for everything you do because you you have that that person in your head the whole time right <laughs> yeah this is brilliant well i we're, we're out of time unfortunately um i really <laughs> want to stay in touch and and see how okay. this how you kind of I'm interested to see now over the next few years how you and your company do in migrating, uh, you know, this older legacy tech into the cloud and, and, and how that works. And You and me both. <laughs> uh, yeah. You have to be a part of it because your customers are used to a UI right now. They have it in their head. They're very, very fast with it. And one of the worst things I've seen happen is you move to a browser-based UI, it's completely different, and all you've done is alienate and upset everybody, you know? Exactly, exactly. And you've got people at different levels and, and things like that. And working in pharmacy, we had different, you know, automations, you know, like cabinets and, and things to dispense our medications with. And it's like, that's one of the biggest things that I was like, I want to be able to write software so I can make these things do what I want them to do because it's yeah, like, why do I have yeah. to, you need to be hit a part 50 of buttons to do one thing? <laughs> like, <laughs> so It doesn't matter how great and shiny the new tool, you know, right. the tool is, nobody's going to be able to use it because right. their productivity level has gone, you know? Right. Oh, so I, it would be really interesting to see how you progress with that and, and how their products progress. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to talk again. Okay. <laughs> years, All right. <laughs> but I, I really appreciate you um, taking the time to talk to us. If anybody has questions for you after the show, what is the best way they can reach out to you? Um, just read on Twitter, my Twitter handle offhand. Twitter handle is <laughs> Renee, R-E-N-E-E -E -E 7076. But we'll put that in the show notes too. Okay, that worked. <laughs> so we got that. All right. I, I, again, thank you okay. so much for um, spending an hour with us. This is Bill Kennedy with the Arden Labs podcast signing off until we meet again. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.